grab you. Reach down, grab you a hymn book. Turn with me to page 547. If you're glad to be at God's house this morning, say amen as you stand. I stand amazed in the presence. <laughs>
child of God, one thing we're blessed with is the is being able to experience the presence of God. If you want it, he said, you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. Amen. If you want that presence, it can, it, you know, it's there. It's there. You know, it's promised even here where two or three are gathered in my name. There I'll be in the midst. Amen. And so when you want it, it's, it's guaranteed. You know, it's, 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 it's there. Now, if there's things we need to deal with in our life, we're going to have to deal with to hang out. Who can ascend that hill, the Bible has? And it says, he that has a clean, uh, a, a clean heart. He that's, that's been forgiven. I can't just walk up into that throne room just, just to walk. But, but if I'm right with God, come on, amen. If, I, if, I'm, if I've confessed my sins and I am right with God, I'm wanting that presence. I can ascend that hill. And I can enter into his presence. Now imagine that not being the case. Remember in the Old Testament, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark, kept the presence of God. And if you remember in, in, the, in the life of the people of God, they lost that Ark to the Philistines. Well, when the Philistines had it, that, it cursed them. It was all kind of crazy happening. And so... They wanted to make sure that it got back to the people. We don't want this no more. And David's like, I want it. And they went to go get the presence of God because the presence of God went with them. But he wanted it. But it was in an ark. It's where God resided. And you say, why did God... I mean, he was everywhere, but that was where his manifest presence was. You say, why was it just there? That's the way he said it now when they were going through. And, and so it went with them, and, and, and they was like, but I want that. So let's go get it. We're going to see that journey this morning of their trip to go get, if you would, God. To bring God back to them. Guys, I'm thankful that when Jesus died on that cross, the Bible says the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when it was torn in two, it opened, it opened up that holy of holies. It opened up the very presence of God for, for you and I to be able to show up at 3400 Kimball Road on a Sunday morning and encounter Him. We didn't have to go... Figure out where it was at. Go get him and bring him here. Matter of fact, he beat most of us here. Come on. He's waited for this day. He desires to meet with his people. Say amen. Listen to this song.
just want you. What a phrase. How powerful. How powerful is that phrase? Jesus, you're all that I want. You're all that I desire. First Chronicles chapter 13. There's a passage, story, long chapters, part of the story anyway, of David and his desire for that statement. I just want you, God. I just want you. And so he made a decision, guys. He made it a priority. To go and to, to, to make sure that the presence of God was, was with the people of God. And so he, the first few verses in chapter 13, you see that. Where he consults with the people and he's like, man, this is what I want to do. This is what, I, and let's go get him. Let's go get God. Let's go get the very presence. Let's go get the ark. And so if you look in chapter 13 and pick up in verse 3, David says, And let us bring the ark of our God back to us. For we have not inquired at it since the days of Saul. Then all the assembly said they would, would do so for the thing that was for, for the thing was right in the eyes of the people. Let's go do this. And everybody was like, I want to, I, that, that's, that's good, let's, let's go make this happen. Now, an interesting verse is verse 3. Because it says, and we're going to continue to read this one in just a second, but I want you to see something. He said, David said, we've not inquired at it since the days of Saul. Most scholars and, and most commentaries will tell you that they believe that that time frame between now, let's make this happen, and the last time that the presence of God, the ark of God was with the people of God, was about 20 years. So for 20 years, it hadn't been a priority. For 20 years, they were too busy. For 20 years, it, 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 it just didn't make sense at that time to go and to, and, and to get the, the ark of God, the presence of God. For 20 years, 20 years, the glory and the tangible presence of God was absent. For 20 years, nobody missed it. How does that happen? How do you go 20 years and not miss the presence of God? How do you go... 20 minutes and not miss the tangible presence of God in your life. How do you go two years and not miss it? I dare say it wasn't a priority. I dare say it wasn't important to them. And so for 20 years, it was pushed aside. For 20 years, it wasn't a necessity in their lives. For 20 years, and, 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 and you know, I, I get it, I'm harping that 20 years. That 20, I want you to see that. I mean, you know you can get too busy for God. Amen. You can have more important things than Him. I mean, you know that if you're not careful, he won't even be a priority in your life. And you'll just go on without the presence. And you know what? 20 years will happen like that. And you'll look back and think, man, what a waste. What a time that I've missed. <clears throat> what a, what a, you know, and, and literally, what all have I missed? Because I didn't make God a priority in my life. Keep reading. So, David gathered, verse 5, David gathered all of 
of Israel together from Shehor to in, in Egypt to as far as the entrance of Hamath and, and, and to bring the ark of God from, from Kerjath Jim. And David and all of Israel went up to Bala, the Kerjath, to Kerjath Jerem, we'll get that in a minute, which belonged to Judah to bring up from, from where they are, to bring up from the ark, there the ark of God, the God Lord who dwells between the cherubim, where his name is proclaimed. And so they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab and Uzzah, and, and Ao drove the cart. Then David and all of Israel played music before God with all their might, with singing on harps, on string instruments, on tambourines, on cymbals, and with the trumpets. And when they had come to Chin's threshing floor, Yusa put out his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled, and the ark shifted when they hit a bump, and he puts his hand up. The Bible says the anger of the Lord was aroused against Yusa, and he struck him right there because he put his hand on the ark and he died before God. David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Yuza and therefore the place is called Perez Yuza to this day. David was afraid of God that day saying how can I bring the ark of God to me? How can I have the presence of God in my life? What a question. What a question. We'll stop there for just a moment. So they're bringing, he said, let's go do this, guys. And we'll, we'll, we'll dig into the story here in just a second. So he inquires of everybody. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. One problem, he didn't inquire of God. He didn't say, God, you know, how, or either search, you say, well, how do you inquire? Search what the word says. Because there was a descriptive, a, a description exactly the way God wanted the ark to be transported. Not on a new cart, but with poles and with certain, you know, it, it, it wasn't just anybody that could tote the poles. And so, you know, had David inquired of God or even searched the word, he would have known exactly how to move this ark, the ark of, the, uh, of God. And so he didn't. He searches with people. They got it. They built a new car. They got it on there. The, the Philistines who had captured it many, many years ago, and and so they got this. They're coming with it. Let, let, let's just do this. And, and so the Bible says they hit a bump. They hit a bump. They're not doing it the right way. They hit a bump and it shifts. And when it shifts, Yusuf takes his hands and he puts it under a hand to try to stable it. To try to keep it from falling. It doesn't seem like that's, there's anything negative about that. It doesn't seem like that should have been a problem in any way, shape, or form. But, but, but here's, the, here's the thing, guys. If they'd have been doing it the right way, if they'd have been doing it God's way instead of their way, when they hit the bump, it never would have faced them. Come on. They'd have just stepped right over the bump. Wouldn't have been a shift in the car. Wouldn't have been... Wouldn't have been uh, a mess up waiting to happen because of bumps in the road. And so, and so do you see what the problem is here? The problem's the what? Help me out. The cart. The problem's the cart. And, 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 and the thing is, because God had said, here's how I want you to do it. Here's how you're going to do it. And so they weren't doing it the way God said to do it. They were doing it the way, help me out, they wanted to do it. And, and, and they had fancied it up, man. They, they were worshiping in front of it. They're singing. They're, they're having all kind of music being played in verse 8. It says David and all of Israel, they're playing music before God with all of their might. I mean, there's, there's passion there. There's desire there. With singing on harps, on string instruments, on tambourines, on cymbals, and with the trumpets. I mean, there's music being made. But, but, but understand this, guys. You've got music. You've got worship. And I believe it's real. I believe it's sincere. But it, but it doesn't fix the issue of the card. How many of you see that? Worship doesn't fix the card. Worship 
and, and, and singing and praising and, and, and all of that doesn't fix what needs to be fixed. It doesn't paint, it doesn't put lipstick on the pig. Come on. You put lipstick on a pig, it's still a what? Still a pig. It's still an issue here. We can sing, we can dance, we can do it all. And, 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 and the whole time we're missing the problem. We're missing the car issue in our lives. You know, I know people that, that uh, I've invited to church and this and that. And had one person tell me one time, he said, he said, oh, I give, I give my tithes to the church. That takes care of my presence being there. Somehow we think we can pay God and then we don't have to serve God and be faithful to God and be honorable to what God's word says. We think as long as I put some money in the plate, I'm good. Worship doesn't fix the card. Giving doesn't fix the sin of my heart by being disobedient to what God's word says. Come on. Amen. And so they were dancing. They're worshiping in front of it. But the card's still there. The card is still an issue. And guess what happens when, when there's carts in our lives and there's issues in our lives and we're not being obedient to what God wants us to do and we're worshiping and we're thinking it's okay and we're giving them and maybe we're showing up once in a while and thinking, you know what? That ought to satisfy God. And God said, look, I don't care how much you want it, let's deal with the cart. And, and, and because the Understand this, there will be bumps in the road. There will be bumps that we will face in the road. That's a new car. They're dancing and singing and playing music in front of all of Israel. And what a scene that I bet you a sight that was. But understand this, guys. Guess what's coming up? Oxen are just, they're pulling this car and, and boom, we hit a bump. Because bumps are what? Coming. They're there. You say, why? Why am I going to bump the inner way? God, we're bringing you back. God, we're doing it. God says, I want you to do it right. I want you to do it. Help me out. My way. My way. And so, bumps in the road, they're coming along. They hit the bump in the road, and guess what? It, it, the ark of, the, of, of, the, of God, the ark of the, it shifts, and looks like it's going to fall, and Yusuf reaches up. You know what Yusuf means? Strength. So here's strength saying, I got this. Guess what? No, you don't. You know, you, you, you say, oh, I, I, I got this. Let me, let me, let me, let me hold it. It's not going to fall. I got this. No, you don't. Guys, it doesn't matter how strong we think we are, how big we think we are. When the bounce is coming and the bumps are going to happen in our life, here's what bumps do. They, they expose the fallacy that thinks you can do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own and we cannot do it void of the Word of God. Come on. We got to have that and be obedient to that. I don't care how strong we think we are. We cannot do it without him. Somebody say, you have to have him. Have to have him. So they hit this bump. Use the wrenches up. And thinks he's going to steady him. And what happens? God strikes him dead right there. Why did God strike him dead? Because God said, don't touch me. God said, don't put your hands on the ark. And what happened? He put his hands on the ark. He said, well, that's not nice, God. God said, if you, you know, if you, David is, if you would have done this the right way, this wouldn't be the problem. And you know what happens to David? He gets what? He gets angry. He gets frustrated. God, really? How are we going to do this, God? I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. God, how come there was a bump in the road? God, you know what we're trying to do here. How come? 
And, and God's like, the boat's in the rubble because I'm showing you, you need me. You need my presence. You need my word. You need my directive. You need to be obedient and do it my way. Come on. Puts a bump there. Relies a bump there. David gets frustrated. David gets angry. David, I mean, he gets messed up in the head. How are we going to do this? How, how is this going to happen? Everybody look this way. Bumps are there to bounce you. Not stop. Bumps are there to get your attention. But not to stop and derail you. Come on. David's frustrated. David's angry. David's not knowing what to do. And, 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 and how we're going to get this right. But guys, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to kind of give you the rest of the story real quick. Then we're going to come back and fill in the gaps. Because the rest of the story is three months later, he comes back for it. Three months later, he comes back from the presence. Now, there was a bump in the road that he wasn't doing it right. And he messed up. And three months later, he's going to come back. They may, bumps may, 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 may derail you. You may have to figure some stuff out. You may have to get some hearts right with God. Come on. You may have to deal with some junk in your life that's keeping you from what, what God wants to do in your life. But bless God, don't you dare give up on the presence. You see, David made the presence a priority. And even though this book is derailing him at this moment, and he's got to figure some things out. And, 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 but, but, but it's not going to deny him his priority. His priority is what? Help me out. Who's his priority? God in his life. God in the life of the people of God. God's very presence with him. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. So, so in the figuring out, he's like, Verse, verse 13 says, David would not move the ark with him into the city of David, but he took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the, the Gittite. Imagine this. It just killed somebody. And here's David knocking on the door, and David said, you know, uh, hey, hey Obed, uh, uh, it's King David here, and, and, and I've got something I need you to do. I need you to watch this for me while I go figure out how to get it to, to the to the city of David. And how do I, I got to get this right. Evidently, I've messed some things up. And, 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 and the priority for me is to get this. But until I get this, I need you to hang out with me. Come on. I need you to babysit it. I need you to watch it. I need you to just hang out with God. Obed said, uh, okay. The Bible says in verse 14, the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months. For three months, he's watching. For three months, he's, 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 he's protecting. For three months, he's keeping it. And I want you to see this, guys. And in those three months, it says, the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all, say all, all, not some, all that he had. God blessed. His presence was there. And, and, and I thought about that. Why did God bless him? Why did God say that all of him and his house was blessed? And his, you know, I don't think his life was perfect, but it was blessed. And, and, and I think the reason is, is that here's Obed Edom. He opens up his house for the presence of God. He says, God, I, I don't get this, God. I don't, you know, but God, I want, I want you in my house. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to be obedient to you. And God says, man, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. So for three months, the blessing of God was upon everything that he had. Everything. And I think it's because he made that ark. He made that box. He made that place, which was the manifest presence of God, his priority. He took care of it. He made sure nothing happened to him. It was his number one 
priority. And God honored that. You heard me say when we, several weeks ago, you heard me preach this over and over and over. If you honor God, God will honor you. And let me tell you another thing I believe happened here. I believe it completely is going to change his life. I believe it's going to mess up his family. He's going to do amazing in it all. But just three months later, remember David had made this or what help me out a priority to get the presents. Three months later, he shows back up. Three months later, there's a knock on the door again, and, and it's David coming to pick up the ark. David had promised that he was going to, and, 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 and so here he is back. That bump messed him up. That bump deterred him. That bump angered him. That bump frustrated him. That bump confused him. He said, I don't even know how to make this happen. But bless God, that bump did not stop him. Amen? Man, I, I picture, we were sharing this other night, Mark and myself, the, the story, and, and, and I picture this, guys, we've been through so many bumps. And the truth of the matter is, it, it doesn't even take a big bump anymore to, to stop people from the presence of God. Amen? And you say, why? Why would a bump stop somebody? Because he was not a priority. If he was a priority, if this place was a priority, nothing would stop you to get back here. Amen? Nothing would stop you from knocking on Obed Edom's door and saying, hey, hey, Obed, it's David, I'm back. I'm back. You know what I bet? You know what I bet? I bet David didn't want, I mean, I bet Obed Edom didn't want to give it up. He, he, hey, he saw it. He said, how many of you tangibly see God bless you? Amen? You've seen it. We've seen it as a people of God. Oh man, even God, it. he saw every, he saw the favor of God, the blessing of God, and I don't believe he wanted to give it up. But he knew he had to. Because, it, you know, he knew David was the king, and he had to do this, and this is what was right to do. And so, he gives it up to David, and if you pick up in chapter 15, go to 15. Real quick. Look down. In verse 16, said, David spoke to the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers accompanied by instruments of music, string instruments, harps and cymbals, by raising the voice with resounding joy. And so the Levites, look at verse 17, the Levites appointed Heman the son of Joel and his brethren. Asaph, the son of, of, of Bechariah, and their brethren, and we, we, I want to skip there to verse uh, 19, or verse number 18, I'm sorry. And with their right, and with them, their brethren of the second rank, Zechariah, then Jehazel, Sheremiah, Sher why are those names so hard? Sheremiah, Jehiel, Unijah, Benaiah, uh, Messiah, Messiah, Matthew, uh, or Matthew, Ma Ma forget that. There's only one I'm looking for. I can't get to it. Who is that right there? You see, here's what I think. I think the Levites were, they're getting everybody together because David said, I want you to appoint some singers and, 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 and here's, here's what I think. What I think happened. Oh, old man Edom said, hey, I can't carry a tune. I can make a joyful noise, but I know who he is. I know what he's done in my life. I've seen the evidence of the blessing over and over and over for three months. I, I know what my God can do. I'll sing for him. I'll sing for him. He said, where'd that come from, preacher? Where'd that hand raise come from? God's a priority now. And where God goes, he's good. Come on. Where God is, he's, that's not the end of the story. He, and so he's like, hey, hey, I'll sing, I'll sing. You know, and, 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 and you look down at verse 23. David's like, we need some gatekeepers. And if you go through and, and notice the gatekeepers, where they are, he said, we got, we got to have some of those that are watching out for it. And if you, if you look down at verse 21, the last part, it says, the priests were to blow the trumpets before the ark of God. And Obed Edom and, and Jehai doorkeepers from the ark. David's like, I need some doorkeepers, man. Obed Edom said, I'll do it. I'll do it. 
I had a buddy of mine, a church I pastored in Moravia. And uh, when I tell you somebody gets a hold, gets, I mean, when, when God gets a hold of somebody and changes their life and they understand that it's God and they understand that they're blessed and they understand that they're saved and they understand that, that because of what Jesus did is not because of what they did. They understand that they're going to heaven one day and not to hell. Why? Because of what they did. It was because of what Jesus did. Let me tell you something about this guy. I couldn't shake him away from the church. He was the first in, the last out. And he was always, and we needed something last God. He's like, I want to help. I don't know that I can sing, but I'll sing. I don't know that I can keep the game, but I'll keep the game. Why? Because being with God was his priority. Hanging out with where God was. If God's there, I'm there. If God's there, I'm going to hang out. And that was the priority in his life. And man, it, I'm, I'm telling you, what a testimony. What a difference when somebody makes God their priority. Chapter 16. I'm going to show you the rest of the story. And we're going to go over it. Everybody got from the head that way. Chapter 16. It says he accompanied some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord to commemorate and thank and to praise the Lord God of Israel. If you look down there in, in uh, chapter 16, verse 37, it said, So he left Asa and his brothers there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord to minister. So they're ministering before the Lord daily, every day, as every day work required. So here's these every day. And if you look at verse 38, who's the first name you see? Old man Eagle. With the 68 brethren are there to serve God. You know, hey, I submit to you, he didn't miss a beat. Say amen. When David knocked on the door and David said, I got to take him, he said, I'm going with you. I'm going to hang out with him. I'm not going to miss what he wants to do in my life. I'm not going to miss hanging out in the presence of God. But right now, oh man, all I need is some singers. He said, let me sing. He said, oh man, I need a gatekeeper. He said, let me keep the game. Oh man, I need somebody regularly to hang out in the service. He said, that's me. That's me. Why? He found the presence of God. The presence of God was a priority in his life. More important than anything else. More important than anything else is hanging out with God. Worshiping him. Just being in his presence. And guys, it didn't stop with Obed. It didn't stop with Obed. Because if you look, go ahead. If you look at chapter 26, Look at verse 8. It said, All these were the sons of Obed Edom. And their sons and brethren, able men who strength for the work, were 62 of Obed Edom. 62 sons. And you say, Why did it tell us 62 sons? Because it's listening to the gatekeepers. It's listing the ones that said, I, 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 want him, I want to be where he's at. And this time it's not Obed. This time it's his children. Because his children see what daddy's doing. His children see the priority. I mean, you know that makes a difference. If they see a priority, I don't care if it's your children, I don't care if it's your grandchildren, if they look at you and they see you and they don't see Jesus a priority in your life, they don't see church as a priority in your life, they won't make this a priority in their life. Amen. But when they see it in you, it changes generations. Mm. Don't miss that. But it's up to me make you that priority. It's up to me to say, 
as Isaiah said in Isaiah 6, hear my sin, man. I got to want this. I couldn't want it for you. I got to want it for me. It's up to King, just like it was up to old man. It's up to King. But here's what I know. If you'll make that a priority in your life individually, corporately, this place is going to explode. This place will explode when you make it a priority in your life. Say to me. Pray with me. Holy God, wow. What a story. What a message. What a challenge to us. Bless this time, Holy God. A time of commitment. It's not a time to do anything else, Jesus. And, 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 and church, just hear my heart. This is a time of commitment. If you're going to commit to this place, this is, this is it. You say, preacher, I'm committed. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm over it. I'm over it. I just need you hanging out. I need you hanging out. Somebody's on the fence. They not, may not move. And you don't move. Somebody may be watching you. You say, why are they watching me? They just might be watching you. Just hang out with me. Because we make the cry. It says, God, we want all of you. We want your very presence. And we're not going to do it with a new cart. We're going to do it your way. How you tell us. Where you tell us. When you tell us. Because you, Jesus, are the most important part. You're what we need. You're all that we need. Your very presence. That's my cry. My friend is for Jesus' name. We'll get you to stay inside.